Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to my channel. Okay, tonight we're going to get into this Housewives episode that aired today, Sunday. Oh, season 9, episode 16. It was named Maui Mayhem. And that show, what it was, y'all. I was asking myself, I ain't talking to the TV screen, talking about where my nene at? Where is Nene Leaks? Oh, Lord, these women don't know how to start drama and slice it up into pieces and then come back on top, okay? And then be schooling and reading folks for Phil. I'm like, Nene, they need to be back in school. They need to take your class 101, how to shade, how to get it together, how to leave it alone, and how to come out getting paid, okay? I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand Sheree's point or even bringing Bob into this scenario if she was just going to fry him like an egg towards the end. I'm like, you had talked this brother up. You had said he had changed or you thought he had changed. And you're going to bring him way at him to Hawaii and film. And then you're going to tell the bad that he's pretty much as a, 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 a beater, a cheater. And I don't know, a person that needs to be locked up for abusing people because he almost killed you. And then you want to sit there and go back with a man like this? Ah, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you crazy. You are absolutely crazy. And you really need some counseling because for you to forget what he did, and it's, it was so detrimental and so painful, I, I'm not understanding I'm not understanding where you're going with the storyline unless you want to play this for season 10. If y'all get a season 10 and you're going to play the um, battered woman syndrome, which I'm like, okay, uh, that's good if you want to air all your personal uh, business out on the street with you and Mr. Bob and... He definitely ain't going to be in it because I guess he just wanted to film because he ain't had nothing else to do because we, we didn't see anything from him but him sweating in all episodes. But my thing is, how can you quickly forget? Nobody's going to really forget being with the man that abused him. And then he going to say, in the trip that y'all were taking going to the speedboat um, event, he literally just said he's getting back with you. For the sake of his grown kids. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck is he talking about? And if y'all trying to get back together, and as he said, your kids are almost grown. Why? Why? You, you want to teach them how to stay in a loveless marriage and an abusive marriage? What are you what are you gonna teach them, Sheree? I mean, this is stupid. And you even said it uh in your confessionals that you were stupid. And I'm like, yeah, you pretty much are because if you're still trying to play a storyline with this guy who definitely hadn't had any change in his behavior or demeanor, he haven't went and saw any counseling. And if he can deal with it by laughing and joking, you know, about doing these things to you, and then he just readily admitted that he stopped, he thought about stopping the car, taking off your seatbelt. And stopping the car real hard so you can fly out the window. I mean, what kind? I mean, yeah, he is a truly Jekyll and Hyde situation. Why? Because I know he just didn't express these types of concerns prior to y'all going to Hawaii. I mean, come on, come on now. Or did y'all just think of this whole concept to put it as a storyline? But that's gonna make us look at you, excuse me, sideways. And definitely, definitely with him as a, a woman beater. And he's going to be stapled that. I'm like, we. I really didn't care for him. But I definitely don't care for him now. And I'm like, what are you doing with him? Why do you want to be with him? But let's get on into this episode. That was just my sidebar I was making, y'all. But anyway, we were recapping from last Sunday's episode. Candy's ready uh, or reading her text to everyone. She gave everybody a piece of paper. So it was pre-planned, as you can see. A piece of paper of her text messages, I guess, that she got from got from her phone. And, of course, these text messages are three years old. Like, damn. 
you keep text messages like that, Candy? I mean, can't you just be a woman and say it happened? It didn't happen. And that's pretty much it. You don't have to prove anything. I said if it has to come to where she is definitely defaming your character and it's affecting your livelihood, your financial uh, uh, portfolio, then you could just sue her and then take all your evidence that you've gotten as far as what we say receipts and let us see a scene where you suing her ass in court. And that would be the piece of resistance that would put you on top. You know, that's the top one. Take a nigga to court when they fucking up like that. When they actually are damaging your reputation, that's the best way you can get it. Okay? Take her for what all she got. Because other than that, you didn't even have to play this game like you were paying. I'm like, dog, you know, do y'all really need to have sex or something? Because you just got too emotional on some shit that you know wasn't right. That's why they say, okay, let this film. Let her put her foot in her mouth till it done went down her throat. Then you go call your lawyer and let your lawyer do the talking for you. And you could have just been silent. Pay her dust. You see what I'm saying? If that's what you want. That's the wrong way of handling things. But how you getting no upset, crying at the drop of a hat. I'm like, damn, stop all these waterworks. Say that for somebody that died. Or, you know, uh, you, you know, you have another baby. You know, so a very joyous moment. Something like that. But you crying over these women. Going back and forth, or what they say, does that I mean? I said, <laughs> sure. Some people don't say some damaging things to my uh, credibility as well. But you thought I shared one tear? Heck to the no no. When he got a lawyer, served up some papers, didn't hear no more from that shit. Okay, got quiet. But I mean, you too much. That that was just totally not warranted what you did. And if it was just for theatrics. I didn't like it. Go take some more acting classes because it didn't make me do nothing but like shake my head at you and just say how immature you are. And it made me think about the escape thing that you held a grudge that long that you would not, you know, get into um, a singing situation or bring an escape back into this girl apologize to you. I mean, really? Really? I mean, that's where we going with it? I'm like, oh my goodness. But anyway, that's just a sidebar. We're going to move on. Um, we have Phaedra and Todd and Cynthia. They are, uh, you know, talking with Candy, trying to, you know, get her to calm down. Then you know, Phaedra tells Todd while they're trying to, you know, let things die down that she he lied on her. And Lord, they start fussing. And then that's when, um, what's her name? Kenya had to come get her and tell her, see, you, you're going all out the, the waterworks. You're going all out the, the uh, cliff. You, we trying to get her to calm down. You trying to start up some more shit um, that Candy can get upset with you about. She's like, oh, you just come on over here and sit down. Okay, because Todd, we're going out the hood. I'm like, no, see, Todd, why are you even getting in that type of business? You're not a woman, and you should have checked Candy and said, look, we can handle with the lawyer. She keep on running her mouth, putting her foot down her throat. We're going to choke her. Let's let the lawyers do a pen and a piece of paper with, with silence a fool every time. And you ain't even got to think about no assault. Okay? Charge being bought. But like I said, Todd is a punk. Ain't no way in the world a man, a real man, going to sit there and let you fuss and carry on. Because for one, they ain't going to want to hear that shit. But he was up there, you know, trying to stop her from going. I'm like, girl, I wouldn't even let her get up from the table. You know, if I was a man and that was my mom, I'm like, sit your ass down. We're going to handle it this way, okay? The right way. We ain't got time to be fussing with nobody, raise nobody blood pressure, have no tears, waterworks come when they ain't even need to be. How you hurt a person, black, white, Asian, Indian, whatever, whatever ethnicity, hit them where it hurts. That's their pocketbook. That's their financial statement, okay? That's where we hit them. Okay, then we move on from that situation. We go to Cynthia. She wants camera time. You know, I'm just like, sit your ass down, Cynthia, please. You just make a fool out yourself. Don't know about a care because you be flip-flopping all over. Whoever win, that's the team you're going to be on and try to film with. Because we seen this shit go down with Nene and Kenya and, and um, what was it? Kim feel all that stuff. We seen it. We don't seen it before. How you would trade up in a minute at a drop of a dime, okay? And I'm just like, mm-mm. 
You know, and then you're going to sit up there and say, oh, well, Portia just lied. She lied. She can't hurt her. That hurt her business, this, that, and third. We we'll deal with it the legal way. Not all this other. Oh, it was just a hot mess. I just want to send it, send it, send it, sit it down and shut it up. Then we go to uh, Sheree. Sheree's calling someone about her house warming. This is the next morning. I'm like, really? Why? We don't want to see Chateau Sheree. Not really. You know what I'm saying? Then we go to Phaedra. Phaedra don't call home. She's talking to little man, Aiden. And Aiden, uh, she's showing him the the beach setting of Hawaii and all that. And he said, you just a lucky woman. Uh, you have time for yourself, by yourself. Okay. Because he, he like, uh-huh. Because when you get home, we're going to wear the hell out of you. Pretty much, you know. So I thought that was very, very cute. I don't know what that. Oh, excuse me, y'all. Uh, I worked today, so I'm kind of sleeping. Because the time changes. Catching up with me. Catching up with me real good. But, um. I just wondering where um Dylan was. You know what I'm saying? Probably tan up something in the back. Probably tan up something in the back. Okay, then we move on. We have Cynthia calling some guy named Kai. I guess he's her assistant for her entertainment business and she's checking on how her fashion show going. I'm like, really y'all? Y'all supposed to be on vacation. I'm sure it just took y'all one week. I'm sure all y'all itineraries will still be fine. If it was really, really important, I'm sure they would have texted you or called you. And you could have did that. But just calling, checking on your own stuff, oh, please. Anyway, we move on to uh, Todd and Candy. They talk about last night events, the first fight, the episode. And Todd saying, yeah, babe, you got so emotional. You know, I'm like, all right, Todd, you are proving and signing to the bullshit. See, I told you you had some women mentality going on with your ass. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it because you're just crazy. You shouldn't have let your wife went off like that. You, Candy, and Portia, if y'all didn't sleep together, hell, y'all should have slept together. Maybe would have lessened up the tension between y'all because y'all, mm-mm. I can't take it with y'all three. And then he, uh, then Cannon, you know, he was telling her, yeah, you had brought the receipts and stuff. But I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't, I can't with Todd. I cannot. You do not need to be in your wife's business. If you would have told her right, you I would have got a lawyer against Portia and sued her for defamation of character, got her coin, and I'm pretty sure she would have had to have retracted her statement. If she didn't want y'all to go further with a, a lawsuit, is what I'm saying. And then that would have been your receipt, and the shit would have been on news. And that was the best advice you got, because you shit, you did the same thing. You went to the media when you wanted um, Natasha or Latasha from y'all escape group to apologize. Hell, she had to go on V103 and say it. And then you didn't invite her to that um, little meeting. Uh, that's what she said when she came on, when they had on voice. Uh, from, uh, what do you call it, intercom or voicemail, not voicemail, but you know what I'm saying, you have a three-way party, and they patch your in, it's like a conference call, and she said she wasn't even asked to join you all, so that's fucked up right there, but, um, that's how can it get down, all right, so we move on from that situation, and, um, uh, they both pretty much have a conversation or Candy say she can't deal with her no more, so a real woman, they're gonna deal with a, a, another woman, Pay them no mind. Pay them dust. Go have fun. Be in your own conversation with folk. If you ain't right, if you ain't about that life and you ain't got your money stacked to sit there and put hands on somebody, then fuck it. Don't say nothing to them. Y'all are not children, but y'all acting like children. Like y'all can't control y'all still. I mean, I be in a room with people that don't like me every day when I go to work. You know what I'm saying? Hey, don't phase me because I'm not here for you. I'm here for the people that I'm out there serving. And I go home. I have a life where I really care about these people that, hey, if they do me wrong, whatever, they're my family. And, you know, I will share some tears. But, hey, it's some I have not shed any tears for and will not. You know what I'm saying? But it's not the ones that I live with. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's other family members that you have to just watch. Keep your mouth closed. Keep your distance. When y'all having family and gatherings and keep the peace. You, you just don't go off, you know. On people, because you know you be ready to put hands on. God, I ain't crying. I'm ready to swing pretty much. Cause I don't, if I don't talk to you one or two times about the same situation, you still talking to us. Yeah, I, I'm. Just, I'm thinking about okay. If, if I if I got enough, if I pay this bill. Do I? You know, I'm, I'm adding my bills because you know my money ain't that strong in the bank. And you know, 
I get tired. I'm ready to swing. And uh, what a person going to do? Get me on a soul chart. Have me in jail. How to go get post and bond and all that kind of sweet shit. But, you know, when a nigga, when somebody just got to be pounced on, then you just got to get it. Just like, so, okay, I, I take my chance and just stay in, you know, jail. Or my family going to come get me out. But I had to think about those things and I had to learn how to keep my mouth closed. But for a person I can't stand, you ain't gonna get no, you ain't getting that damn tail out of me. You might get me where close I want to get a coat to your neck. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, it, you know, it's, it's just see what it is. You know what I'm saying? But Tana got on my nerves with her little mess. I mean, it's either put up or shut up. You know, do it the legal way or get hands on. But right now, I'm, I'm just tired of that. I'm, I'm tired of her and her mess. Damn, do it right to somebody, okay? But anyway, um, you know, the whole way she was going and presenting the case was like she was in court, you know, presiding over her own case and then the judge hear her her uh testimony or her <laughs> her uh, plea to the uh court on this situation with uh Portia. I like girl sit down. But anyway, then we have Candy calls Phaedra to tell her to tell Portia to not come to the event today so she can have some peace. Now, you know that that ain't nothing but a punk move. That's a little girl move right there. And can't, I mean, Portia, I mean, uh, Phaedra said, okay, I'll talk with her today and, you know, we'll, we'll just, you know, keep her out of it and, you know, we'll have a good time without her. So she goes on for that. Then Todd and Phaedra uh, has woken up. No, uh, I'm sorry, not Todd and Phaedra, but Todd and um, Portia has woken up. They're getting ready for their day. You know, uh, Portia's oblivious of what really happened. I guess she thought she could say something. And it'd be like when they at home, give them a little time, then, you know, they're back together. And then Todd said, okay, yeah, y'all, this dysfunction is what you're saying. She said, yeah, something like that. We, we, we said what we got to say. We are digesting, and then we go back and be with each other. But no, Portia, that's not what's happening in Hawaii. They're punking your behind, and you're taking it. Because if it were me, I could hear it. Candy didn't pay for that trip. I'm sure Bravo paid for that trip. And I would have gave them some action. Because I would have had my little butt behind. My little booby butt butt behind. Uh, sitting on that um bus to be taken. You know, I could probably had to ride with somebody else. And not in her same car, meaning Candy. But I would have got my black behind right up in that... that um. Jeep, and I would have rolled on. I would have been on that speedboat thing. I would have gotten me some action in. Okay, so that's how I would have played it. But you know, she let uh Phaedra and uh Candy punk her out, so they just decided that it would be best. And the fact Phaedra was pretty much like, I think it would be best for y'all both. It's you know, less water and it's a small boat, and you know, I, I just don't want to see nobody going overboard. It's pretty much what she was trying to say. So I'm like, whatever. So Portia agreed with her, saying, oh, okay, well, me and uh, Todd just enjoy ourselves together and this, that, and the third. But what I thought was really crazy was, you know, Phaedra coming over there in this tiny-ass um, bikini that she talking about. She had this when she was 18 years old in high school. This was her first, you know, um, swimsuit. And I'm like, you should have took it off. You should have took it off, okay? It should have just cramped your behind, your vagina area so bad that... It was a hot mess because when she came in there calling herself trying to get Portia and taught the news that she couldn't come home their little speedboat trip she was just she should have been just twerking on his ass and ready to give him a lap dance all three of them could have just had an orgy right there because you know she disrespected Portia and her man by pulling her um swim trunks or a bathing suit uh, the bottom part that should have been it kind of looked like a thong really but it was tucked up her ass and she had to pull it out because it was getting on her nerves. But she was trying to shake, you know, show it, you know, to Todd. And he was like looking, but then putting his head down in his laptop. And I'm like, I would have slapped the shit out of face and tell her to get the hell out of him. And I probably would have got my ass right back to Atlanta, you know. But, you know, I'm like, y'all too freaky. Y'all, why? Phaedra don't need to go nowhere. Y'all just need to get y'all horn in the south. Have, you know, have that and then just meet everybody when they come back. You didn't need to go either. But that's just how it was. You know, again, uh, Portia getting done wrong by her girlfriend. Because I'm pretty sure if Portia, if um, Phaedra was still married to Apollo and Portia pulled some shit like that in front of her, she would have cussed Portia out. Whether she did it to, you know, on the side, you know, on another scene, or she would just got her straight right then and there. But, you know, like I said, Portia want to play a punk. 
you go and play a pump for their behinds. It's good all in the neighborhood, okay? Okay, and then we go to we go to commercial, then we come back, and we have two separate vehicles uh, that they're going to the speedboat race in. You have Peter, Cynthia, Todd, Candy in one car, and then you have Phaedra, Kenya, Bob, and Sheree in the other. And then we got two stories going on in each car. Can, uh, both of them are talking about, in both cars, Candy and Portia and Phaedra. And the first car with Peter and uh, Todd and, you know, Cynthia and Candy. Peter said after, because Candy asked, well, what happened? Because I left. What what happened um, after we left? Then, of course, Peter said, hell, I was down there for another hour getting my groove on and enjoying the scenery and all that good stuff. And uh, uh, Portia was still there with Todd, and they was talking about, you know, what really Portia was saying. She was just tired of people uh, jumping on her, and she being the only one jumped on, and that's not fair. She's going to, you know, fight her way through it all, and this, that, and third. So, of course, they joked about that, you know, like she playing the victim. And in the other call, we had Phaedra talking about everybody has had their share of a line on one another and this, that, and the other. And then Kenya's trying to say, well, Portia just lies because she wants to when it's not even true. And of course, you know, Phaedra is, you know, half-heartedly taken up for Portia in some way, but she could have just went hard. Like, well, Portia has definitely been going hard for her. Then we have... uh. Sheree is saying in her confessionals that Phaedra is going to make up any excuse for her partner in crime. You know what I'm saying? Portia could be in there robbing a the bank, but she'll be saying, no, nah, Portia just in there making a deposit. <laughs> so I, I thought that was cute. Then we move on. Um, Cynthia goes on and record on record to say she believes candid. And until there's proof otherwise, you know, she's just going to be like, honey, why don't y'all take me to, to this um dungeon, drag me down in, so let me see what y'all got. You know, make it a light joke of it. But she re went on record saying she believes Candy. She down for Candy, Candy her girl, and Portia just some nuts saying ridiculous stuff, and she needs to stop it, and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, Cynthia, shut the fuck up. Okay, I, nobody really want to hear your confessions or what you feel, your opinions. We really don't. So we move on from that situation. Then we have Kenya. Just don't want to talk anymore. She just said, I'm just ready to turn up. I just want to have fun. Just that and third. So then we go back to Cynthia. Cynthia is thinking it wasn't a bad thing having Peter to come with her on the trip. And it actually crossed her mind that she might want to get some more sex pay with him. Like, you know, go bumping booties and all this prior to her divorce being final, which should have been final in a couple of days from what Kenya said. Then we have Sheree makes a reference to the crew that she ride with that her and Bob couldn't have been like Cynthia and Peter. It was still too much anxiety, um, too much animosity, hate, and anger between the two of them. Then Bob says, um, you know, some stupid shit like they were riding somewhere to Las Vegas or coming back from Las Vegas and she fell asleep. And he just thought about just taking, speeding up real fast and taking her seatbelt off and then just um, slam on the brakes and then throw her, uh, hope her behind fly through the windshield. I'm like, could we rewind that? Because that's pre premeditated murder is what I think that is. I'm like, what the, f why would you say some crazy ass shit like that from a woman that bore two beautiful children for you? Why would you say that on record? That's a mind, that's a, a criminal mind right there. A chaotic, psychotic type of man right there. So I was like, I was to stop, rewind, uh, driver, can you pull over? Let me get another car. I'm not going nowhere with this man. I'm actually finna take a flight up out of this mug, okay? So that's what I would have did because hmm, we would have had that on court papers that he tried to kill me. It would have backed her other story up. That, you know, he tried to do all these awful things to her. And, you know, that would have ruined my trip right then and there. And everybody, you know, oh, what's her name? Uh, King was like, what? what? What did you just say? You know, and they all looking at him like, damn, what the hell are you talking about? And then he goes on to say something really stupid. He like, well, did I choke you? Uh, have I hit you before? This, that, and third. And, you know, she really don't say that at first. And then she'll go back. And she admits to him choking her. 
He said, well, uh, I don't remember that. If I did, I'm sorry. And then um, then he says, right after he said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't choke you hard enough where you couldn't breathe. I said, what the fuck? Uh-uh. I've -uh. been, been on him. They probably had to get a assault charge on me because I would have witnesses. But I was whooping his ass or trying to anyway. But uh, she just sitting there looking crazy with her shades on and trying to sniff her like she was crying. But I ain't seen not one tear, y'all. I'm sorry. I ain't shading her in no kind of way. But I'm like, didn't see one tear. But it wouldn't have been me because I went all upside his head. I, I really would have. Because that was just crazy. And then with her little sniffles that she doing, like I said, I ain't seen no crying going on. Uh, Kenya gonna be trying to console her, and then he looking at her like, "What are you doing? Why are you crying?" You know, kind of belittling her a little bit more, and then Phaedra just motioning to him, to apologize to her, apologize. He's like, "I ain't gonna apologize to her. You crazy?" Then he go on to say, "Well, I think he called her Chet, so Chet maybe that's his nickname for her." He's like, you you know I care about you. I'm your number one supporter. But not one time did he try to take her in his arms and say, you know, I'm, I I was just joking. Maybe that was just poor taste that I chose to do it that way. Da, da, da. Bob ain't say shit. Bob like, mm -mm, I ain't saying, I ain't saying that shit. I ain't going to be bothered with this. No, me pretty much should say ho or whatever, this trick or whatever he wanted to call it. Because that's probably what he was thinking. Because his whole demeanor was just totally ugly. You hear me? Ugly. <sighs> and I'm like, you wants to get back with this man? I was like, uh-uh. He crazy. She crazy. They both crazy. You know, I think they both need some psychiatric treatment. Because he was basically saying, you know, we we taking this journey together. uh, And you got grown-ass kids we trying to get back together for. And... I'm like, man, you warped. You are warped. And if Sheree basically want to get back for the sake of the kids, she warped in her brain, too. Them kids are, ha well, Cairo is about eight, 17, 18, and the other one's just right after him. And then she got one grown daughter with somebody else. But I'm like, they're, they're, even if they were five or six years old, there's no need to stay any in any marriage for no kids. I don't care if you're getting abused or you're not getting abused. I don't care if uh, it's verbally or uh, physically. If the marriage is dead, if you feel like you need to seek outside sources for another man or another woman to get your rocks off on and to spend more time than what you're doing with your family, as a family unit, you need to get a divorce. You really, really do. And one that Sheree has been in, that's, uh, we, he wouldn't be filming with me. He would be so dead in my mind, my thoughts or whatever. It would just be that. I don't know what, I'm a beautiful woman Sheree is. She kind of got a fucked up attitude. That ain't no lie. But you should be really looking for another person to share the rest of your life with. You don't raise your kids. You don't did a very good job. Just move forward and leave this, this rap trap of a man. Uh, we ain't going to call him a man. He's lesser than a man. He's just a sperm donor. Leave him alone. Period. Point. Period. And blank. Okay. So we're in that situation. But, you know, before we really end it, he grabs her, you know, by her hand and tries to hold it and say, you know, it's it's okay. It's okay. I, you know, I, you know, I hate to see you cry. But now one time did he not embrace her and say, you know, I'm sorry. Maybe we need to go get counsel before we try to get back together. Because trying to get back together for some kids is halfway grown. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that. And then he treating her still. You know, showing us on live TV. I'm like, uh-uh. You know, if you're trying to get Bob back for something, that you're trying to get him back in court for some long-time abuse, that's fucked up, too. Because you shouldn't have never brought him on the show. If you didn't handle it off-camera, we sure don't need to hear about it on your own camera. And if that's just how he is and you didn't plan it that way, girl, run for the hills. You don't need that man. We go to commercial, we come back. We have Todd and Portia are at that massage appointment. And everything's going real good. And somehow, Todd's little umbrella comes down on him and you know i don't know if that was a bad omen or whatnot i don't know but they were still kind of enjoying themselves then you have candy and her crew have finally got to the speedboat event um cynthia's complaining because she thought it's gonna be a beautiful big yacht and the yacht was gonna pretty much you know take them you know i like cynthia 
again, you overdress for something, and then you want to try to make it something else when Ken and Todd said, biggest day we were going speedboat racing. And if you're going speedboat racing, I don't care if it's four, po four people in the boat or ten in the boat, you're going to get wet because that's all you're doing is chopping waves, running over big waves. That, that's it. So I don't know. Oh, whoo, dumb as rocks. Dumb as rocks. Okay. Uh, then we have, um, Sheree, when she got there, she was pretty much like, she didn't want to be bothered with Bob, and I'm like, but yeah, you sit, you sit next to him, like, ain't nothing happened, I'm like, stop being in denial, okay, you're in very much so denial, then we go to Todd and Portia, they're enjoying their time together on the beach, and they see a married couple getting married, uh, Pretty much unorthodox, you know. It seemed like it might be a uh, spur of the moment. Then uh, Todd asked Portia, do you want to go on and get married too? And she's like, hell no. I ain't for you know, barge into somebody else's wedding. And then, hell, I want my own. And she's talking about, I need a ring. And so he pretty much runs into the ocean and, you know, asking her to come in. And she like, she ain't coming in. Then she's going to talk about, uh, take off your drawers or take off your shorts. Take them out. Like she's going, you know. Get a picture of him, then you're gonna post it on social media, or you just gonna even. I like, oh Lord, you know, he he's too young because ain't no real man gonna take they draws off unless they got the woman in they, you know, uh, vicinity where they're there, there, and they, you know, and ain't nobody else on the beach, and y'all might get freaky that way, you know. But ugh, like I said, two kids on a beach, okay. Then we go uh, where they don't got finished with their speedboat racing and um. The crew goes back to have some dinner and drinks, and uh, first they have a little talk session, and everybody's, well, we'll just say Portia is being missed by Phaedra. <laughs> we'll say it that way, because the other crew didn't care one way or the other, and so that's when, uh, uh, what's her name, Phaedra comes out, come out, they need to have a spiritual restoration service, you know, and they can't wait back until they get back to Georgia. They need to have one now. So, you know, the men looking like, okay, this is something like, well, you know, Peter, you know, he a real man. He'd be sitting up there. He might fool around with other women, allegedly, and he might spend uh, Cynthia's money uh, to the big, to the bank goes zero on her balance sheet. You know, he, he may be all those things, but he ain't finna be up in women's business unless somebody directly ask him something. Then he's gonna have, yes, he's gonna have a, a lot to say, and his opinion is gonna be too much, Okay. But he did the right thing. He was like, okay, these women getting crazy. Now, we got we got to leave. We, the fellas are going to leave while y'all handle y'all women stuff. So, he pretty much get everybody as far as men is concerned so the women can talk things out. And then, um, Peter, um, Phaedra talks to the ladies after they leave. To, uh, just let's just sit down and have a conversation with Portia and let's work things out. And if anybody else have any other differences with anybody else uh, in the group, Let's just settle it so we can have, you know, a good time. Let's just all be cordial. And just have this little meeting, you know, work it out. Of course, Kane was like, fuck that. I don't give a shit about this woman no more. I did that in third. And, you know, since they're going to, you know, say something with her ass, should just shut up totally. And, you know, Kane going to make her little remarks. But, of course, she got to do something, you know, to stay relevant. And so, you know, Alan all was pretty much half-heartedly didn't want to do it, but they said, okay, we'll do it. So, when the commercial came back, we have Sheree and Kenya get into it until Phaedra stops them. Then we have Portia say something, then directs it to Candy. Then Candy speaks for a few seconds and then drops the conversation with Portia totally out. She just shut it down. Then we have Portia tells Candy that she needs to apologize to Phaedra. And Candy started like, what the fuck you talking about? I ain't got no apology in her. And Phaedra get into it and had words about some man she was supposedly been dating uh, while Apollo was still out. Not before he had went to prison, but she was seeing a man behind Apollo back. And, um, of course, Phaedra denied, denied, denied. And then we leave that situation. Um, let me see. What do we do? I think everything, really everything just pretty much exploded from there. They didn't get nowhere with the conversation. They ended up at the same place they started when they first started the meeting when everybody came in. It's kind of piss poor planning. And uh, even Candy recognized that Phaedra didn't get nothing or what she wanted out the meeting. 
But I'm like, of course, she had no spiritual dialogue. She has no plot, no setting, no theme to it all. Of course, it went hell, went to, to, to the hell basket. I'm like, you're supposed to go in prayer first and just let people talk about what had hurt their feelings and try to find a re resolution without putting their personal experience of how it was hurting them. You know what I'm saying? When they come to a resolution, uh, just look at the facts that are being stated and evaluate it and just say, you know, is this something that, you know, you think the Lord would approve of you being, you know, whether you're lying on somebody or you think you're telling the truth, but it may not be the truth per se, because everybody has their perspective of what truth is. <laughs> And then take it a little further, you know, make it maybe they need counseling or, you know, maybe the friendships just need to be for taping, which I think they all are now because I don't think none of them hang with each other in real life. But, you know, it's supposed to be a reality show and they're supposed to give us really some reality of their plots and their storylines. But we know half of that shit is fictitious. Sometimes we may get a little brief of some honesty there, but it just is what it is. But, yeah, I'm like, mm -mm, I need my nanny back. Nene made it fun. These women just too trifling and they just talk too much. I'm like, be about it. You know, do your thing. You know, you got to kick some ass, kick some ass. Go get it, you know, go to jail or something. Get some bail out. You know, talk your walk. Be about your walk. But no, I ain't really want nobody to put their hands on each other. But it, it would have been good if uh, Candy would have sprinted down and then somebody would have caught her. You know what I'm saying? Just see what Portia would have did. But, um, it is see what it is. It seems like they're going to be turned up next episode as well. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but, you know, right now I'm really tired. I, I don't want to uh, hear nothing about no abuse and that storyline coming in. Because, you know, it really wasn't fair to Bob. I don't think he was prepared. But, you know, it's like thrown in there. And I'm like, that's not a storyline I care to see. They could have kept both uh, Bob and Sheree really out. Because Sheree's not really doing anything but starting shit. And at least if, you know, Hell, Nene came in and got rid of Claudia, and she that shit was just straight up fly how she did that, you know. But uh, it, I don't know where they're going with none of the storylines now. All of them just look really rough and very hard to believe, and they're not pulling it off. But that's what my review. It took a little longer than I anticipated, um, but I had to get my point across. So I hope y'all enjoyed it, and stay tuned for next episode as well uh, that's coming up Sunday. So y'all take care. Be blessed. Bye-bye.